first poem when I was seven. It was about a monkey, and I typed it in blue ink on my parents' computer, and then I gave it to my parents. And I was delighted, because I'd written a poem, but obviously it was terrible, because I was seven and it was about a monkey. <laughs> and then, as a teenager, I enjoyed poetry in school, but I didn't really write it, because I, di I didn't need it. And then my best friend took his own life uh, when I was 17, and I suddenly needed it again. Because poetry and writing for me have always made sense of the way I was feeling. So I found myself writing poetry again when that happened. And I want to kind of convey not just how poetry can help us, but how creativity can help us through our hardest moments and give meaning and purpose to the things we're feeling. So I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to punctuate that conversation by performing some poetry for you tonight that I've written myself. So the first poem is called The Page. Have you ever written something just to feel something? Just to heal from something? Just to peel something back? The layers of an onion resist before they crack. That first sentence, the hardest one to write, then words begin to flow and ink as black as night, the page is ruined until it's dripping wet. Now it's soaked with all these things you left unsaid. Before you sat to write, did you even know you were upset? The page is soaked, a reflection of your mess, and yet your mind feels lighter because you allowed the emotions to leave your head. I'm 28 now, um, but from the ages of 18 to 22, I was quite depressed for four years. Um, <clears throat> and I didn't know until I was 21, and then I denied it to myself for a further year because I didn't want to believe there was something wrong with me. I thought there was something wrong with being depressed, so I denied it. And the most prominent symptom I can remember is not being able to feel anything completely emotionally numb. It was kind of like a fuse had gone in my brain, and I couldn't no longer connect to the part of my brain that was emotional. And this went on for a long time, and when I recovered from depression, I had to relearn emotion, and this was a very slow process. It took years. I'm still kind of learning. It was kind of like I, I knew there was emotion, but the volume was turned down. Or, you know, when you're underwater and someone's shouting at you. You know they're saying something, but you can't really make it out. That's what it was like. But I knew enough to fake emotion. I knew people expected emotion from me, so I knew enough to know what I needed to portray to the world. So if I got bad news, I pretended to be annoyed and frustrated, but I couldn't feel anything. If I got good news, I painted smiles on my face, made sure everyone knew I was happy, but it wasn't doing anything. And this, for me, is the scariest part about depression, because intellectually, I knew I couldn't feel emotion, but because I couldn't feel emotion, I couldn't feel afraid that I wasn't feeling emotion. So I didn't even know there was anything wrong. I just knew I wasn't feeling emotion. And I told myself that this is just how adults feel. Every adult goes through this. This is how we are. So I was 21, couldn't feel emotion, and I thought that was how it was going to be for the rest of my life. So this next poem is called Confirmation Bias. The moments in when I might feel something are rare and uninviting. Like when a neighbor reluctantly invites you in for coffee because it's raining and you've forgotten your keys. I am now cold to the touch like clothes are when you can't tell whether they're wet or just freezing. Not even my skin can feel things properly. Unintentional cruelties are now common, like not responding to the essay you've sent me before moving on. These decisions are unapologetically analyzed the days after drinking too much whiskey. So at 22, 
I started writing poetry again. I'm not really sure what prompted this. All I know is that I always loved writing, I always loved words, I always loved language, and so I started writing. And what poetry did for me, lads, is profound. Suddenly I was filling pages and pages with these emotions I didn't even know I was feeling. And it allowed me to understand how I was feeling and then process them. And I understood that I was still grieving my friend. I was very lonely. But also, there were parts of my life that I enjoyed and that I really liked about, about my life. And so writing did that for me. And suddenly, I went from not feeling anything to feeling everything again. And it's this what's so vital, because a life without emotion has no meaning. We can't connect with other people, and a life without connection means you're always alone, even when you're surrounded by people. And so this, this is the message of creativity. It's what creativity can do for you. It can change from feeling nothing, from having no connection, to having all the connection you need, because life is absolutely nothing without connection. And this next poem is called, How can I explain this to you? How can I convey to you what it feels like to be outside of something which you've always been within so naturally? I am a window unable to close properly, leaving a, a current to swirl around the room. I am the wobble in a table's leg, a creak in an old door. I am a typo, a misprint, smudged ink on wet paper. I am the unexpected second child, the afterthought again and again. Not of design, but of circumstance. The piece that does not belong, the shoes that do not fit. You are of life. I am outside of it. Adam McKay, film director, once said that poetry and the truth are very similar. And everybody fucking hates poetry. <laughs> and I was no different, to be honest. For most of my life, I did not like poetry. Didn't get it, thought it was pretentious. Didn't enjoy it until I needed it until it got so bad for me with depression that I needed something to bring me back from the brink and allow me to express emotion again. And poetry is just an example here. The real point is that creativity, when we embrace it, can do the same for all of us. Victor E. Frankl once said, or wrote, sometimes suffering ceases to be suffering the moment it finds meaning. And I think this is what creativity does for us. It gives meaning to our suffering. And creativity in itself is inherently good. It just makes us feel good if we create something new. You'll notice intuitively, if you've ever made yourself dinner and it's terrible, but you really like it because you made it. <laughs> creativity is inherently good. And as human beings, we kind of get caught up in saying, oh, he's a creative person, she's a creative person. We're inherently creative. Bees pollinate, trees make oxygen. We create, we transform, we innovate. It's what we do, it's our niche. It's in us. And we don't have to stick to the traditional roles of creativity to be creative. We don't have to paint, we don't have to write, we don't have to sculpt. We can garden. We can take a new route home. There's a reason we say to create a life for yourself. We create our lives, we create families, we create careers, we change the world around ourselves to give our lives meaning. That's what creativity does. And true creativity, I found my purpose and my meaning. It was the catalyst behind starting my mental health blog, writing my books, normalizing the conversation around mental health, because as I shared my poetry in person, in writing, in videos, people found it and they resonated because they realized they weren't feeling the way they were feeling on their own. Other people felt the same, and that created a connection between me and the people who were reading. 
And suddenly, we're all alone in this together. So the ask is this. Make time for creativity. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be an undertaking. You don't have to write a book. I'd almost recommend you don't write a book. <laughs> but make time. Take a new route home. Plant a tree. Cook something mad. Because creativity gives our lives purpose. And when we do eventually hit bad times and we struggle mentally, using creativity can give meaning to that suffering. And that, that's when the suffering will cease. So this last poem is called Tree. Dig in, grip the earth, soak it up, plant yourself firmly. The darkness is good, absorb it, the light will come. This universe has a process worth trusting, bursting, you're bursting with light, love, madness, glorious unlikelihood. Lightning, striking, spiking, frightening, twice in the ground and again in your soul. Uncoil what's been given. Knots in your back show where you've been tuned, pruned, not ruined. Circles around your mouth Show the years, bore them deeper and keep them. Let them show how far you've come. Smiles laid on thick in the rain, pull the rest of which you as you go. Sprawl and crawl your roots, draw in grass, water, sun, daughter. No use for worry, trust it, trust yourself. A thousand iterations of you have come and gone. Hold on, hold strong, this is you, this will always be you. Impossible to hurry a thing like this. Nature like this. Nature like you. Thank you. <laughs>